Hi, I'm Greg Soderlund, the uh, race director of the Western States Endurance Run. We're here in Carson City at the uh, Comstock Heritage Silversmith Company where the Western States Endurance Run buckles are built. See the amount of uh, handwork and uh, effort that goes into each and every buckle and why every Western States buckle is so unique. Um, we start uh, the Western States Endurance Run order usually in February or March. Um, my dad usually will start setting up the dies. Uh, the bronze that we have for the overlays and the ribbons and the numbers and the letters and the buckles. We've had um, the material probably for 15 years or so, maybe 20 years, because bronze, uh, both of my uncles work in bronze making police and fireman badges, and so there's just always bronze around. Um, we try and time it so that uh, February, a, or a little bit into March, but mostly April and May, we're working on these buckles pretty consistently. Um, <clears throat> And in June, you know, it's the big push to get everything done, make everything coordinated. The uh, drop hammer. Now, these things used to be powered by steam. This particular one wasn't, but they are all kind of handmade and altered. Uh, if you look up here, my great uncle took the back end out of a 1957 Chrysler. All right. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> that was nice. That was good. Where's the other one? Ah, there we go. So here's Greg's. Here's Craig's. Get all these parts out on um, a big table, and you start to coordinate them. You put uh, flux in the back of them. First, you grind them. Then you put flux in the back of them. Then. Uh, you put solder in the back of them and get these all uh, ready to solder down. One of the steps that we miss is that each one of those things, the ribbons and everything, need to be flat when you put them down. Otherwise, they curve up on the ends, and then you have a problem with them later. So each individual piece, even the, the little thing that says 100, has to have that kind of attention to detail. So for about six months here, we are, uh, well, maybe not six months, four months, we're a wash in the sea of Western State Park. 100 miles, ribbons, scenery, buckles, uh, you name it, we've got them. It goes in the polishing cloths, to the boxes, everything. It's, they're just everywhere around the shop. Um, as they have been, uh, well, for more than half my life around this season. Um, it's a good time for us because it runs actually opposite of, the, of our busy seasons. So um, the fact that it's in the summertime really works out well for us. Uh, you can see each one of them, I like to describe what, what this is, is like a hot moving puzzle because there's only one way that all the pieces fit. And there's only the one way they look correct as well and straight. So, you know, you've got your tweezers here. There's a heat, a flame that's from underneath, and you've got a flame in your left hand and a torch. And underneath, it makes it so that the pieces want to clear the buckle. So, total time, James, how much time do you think goes into each buckle? Oh, um... Okay. I mean, if you had to make one, it would be hours and hours because you've got all the die setups and everything like that. Uh, with this, I mean, you know, the thing is, there's no speedy way to do it. This is as fast as it gets. I mean, I can see just this step alone is taking 10 or 15 yeah. minutes. It takes about 15 minutes a buckle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just to solder on uh, uh, the ribbon. Once the buckle is soldered, then you put the uh, dome in, which is the overall curvature, so that it adheres to your body a little bit well, follows the the form of your uh, of your hips. After um, after that's done, the back goes on so that it'll attach to your belt. There's a hook there, and there's lugs and a swing bar so that um, it sits a little bit uh, nicely on uh, nicer on your body. Um, so after the back is on, it goes in for polishing. Then uh, hopefully whoever is making your cougars, in this case John, but whoever's making your cougars is caught up with you, and so you have a whole big pile of cougars there that you can put a dome into, a curve into, um, put solder on the back and then solder them down at the bottom. This is a kick press. Um, it's foot operated, just because it's foot operated doesn't mean you can't hurt yourself. Uh, this one's not sharp, but it'll for sure hurt you um, if you're not paying attention to what you're doing. This right here just about matches the curve of the buckle. Okay. So, hit this a couple times. And 
There it's about the shape of the buckle. There's a little bit of a gap here. So what you do is take your fingers, press that down, and now it's the shape of the buckle. The lowest temperature solder that we use. Um, like so many other things here at the shop, it's just always been this way, so we just never changed it. This is more flux, sound like the white stuff down there, except for, you know, meant for a lower temperature. You mix it with water. You want to get this hot enough to where it kind of sizzles like that. You guys have to make sure you get the end of the tail. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just put it in here just for good measure, just so that uh, the solder flows a little bit better. The buckle. Uh, after that, there's another polishing process, and then it goes to the engraver. Uh, the engraver um, uses his specially made tools to engrave it. It takes probably 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, depending on the silver ones take twice as long as the bronze ones. Uh, if you look at them both together, there's twice as many cuts. And there's clouds and birds on some of them and on others not. Um, after uh, the engraving is done, the buckle goes to the rouge room to have the final polish put on it. We use a red rouge for the bronze and a green rouge for the silver ones. Then they're washed out in a mixture of boiling water and dishwashing liquid. They're dried off. And then you get your paint out, which is mixed so that it's just light enough to where it won't come out, but heavy enough to go into the grooves that are left by the embossed ribbon, which is Western States Endurance Run and Award. After the buckle is put in the dryer, uh, they come out and you wipe them down with thinner, and the thinner and the paper towel will take off the paint that's not supposed to be there and leave the paint that's supposed to be there. This is just an engraving ball. I don't know if you've ever seen one before. It's got a uh, mechanism that allows it to turn and then on the base you can move it around. And uh, I just wear the glove just in case, but uh, <laughs> I can see it doesn't do anything but yeah. clean the tool on its way out. So <laughs> anyways, um, this is a wriggle tool and I, I hand make all these tools. We order the stock for them and then I make them. So, wow. Anyway. That's amazing. You need to be able to see the design before it's finished. I mean, the pen just uh, is a little bit, but you need to be able to envision the, the completed buckle before so you start. So those are start. different on each buckle. Yeah. What's that? What you just yeah, I just I hand draw in. I hand draw in this part, and um, you know each scroll is done by hand. So there's no way you could physically duplicate it exactly. I mean, they're all. You look at them to the naked eye, they look the same, but right. but um, each of them are a little different. Those letters are nice and crisp because where it really comes out is over here. And you find yourself um, touching up the last of the buckles and you're painting in a W or you're you know, hand painting in like that. Because uh, you can't go back and, and stamp it after the fact. Right. So there's the paint. So finally, um, you're left with a little bit of a rainbow effect of the thinner on there. You take another paper towel and you take that off and the buckles are ready to be boxed up. Uh, they get boxed up with the Western States Endurance for a polishing cloth and um, we drive them up to Auburn for the race.